So, this should be episode four, and I think a new murder just happened. So let's see if we can catch him this time. It's raining outside, I'm in a diner. I'm going to buy coffee. And I think it happened on the 13th floor. Okay, the cops have better have been here and marked the place. Okay, before we go in... Look what we got so far. That's the first victim. The killer... Had a leaflet in the area. Not sure if it was related to the killer or somebody else. About Lucas Siempre. And a crumpled piece of paper. And a fingerprint type G on the paper. And also investigated the girlfriend of the, of the victim, but she appears to be innocent. What was interesting is she had a bank statement that was about Lucas Siempre. Maybe perhaps there's a connection here. So let's see the second other case. Make sure no camera sees me going in. Okay. Okay, we have a victim in the hallway. Now here's the thing in the game, when you find crumpled paper. In most cases, it gives you a clue that's so easy it's almost an exploit. So I'll probably ignore the crumpled paper contents for this, for this um, video. Because um, it sometimes turns the murder case into just jumbling certain letters because the killer leaves his own name as a anagram on the, on the table. And if it's an odd sounding name, you can just narrow it down by just looking at some names and that's it. Which makes the game too easy, I think. Ah. We have a Type G print again. It's connected to the other Type G print. Taking a crumpled paper. That's two anagrams of the same thing. And the second killer makes it easier for you by first name dot, the initial of the first name dot, and then the second name. And I'm going to ignore that because it makes the game way too easy. And I hope the developer changes that because I want to do detective work and not just rearrange some letters on, on, the, on the paper. Okay, now let's see. Take print of the victim. Yeah, that's the new victim. Let's see what she was carrying. Bullet wound from a pistol. The thing is, the game is some. I think it's a bug where the entry wound data point is we can only have it once on the whole board for the killer because it's probably the same modus of killing for, for both times. Okay, here we get 3:45, 5 a.m. That was about two hours ago. Killer left any boot prints. One canister. Shotgun it belongs to the victim, probably, because there was no shotgun being used in the, in the crime, I think. Any prints on the shotgun? Type L. I think it's probably the victim. So probably won't pick that up. Those could just be running prints. Okay, the killer came inside. What's that? Another couple of paper.
Pojdź ze mną. I think K and L print types are the people are living here. I need that cash for myself. <clears throat> Documents in there. Okay, second bedroom. Maybe the killer went for this stuff. Type G, uh huh. So the killer touched this one. He was looking for something. Passcode where you were born. Okay. Seventeen sixty passcode. I'm gonna wake them, I have to find an hamster. Hey, what time it is? It's early in the morning, so probably the spouse or girlfriend or boyfriend is probably at the block right now. So what's currently problem in this game is that passcodes are too easy to find in this game. So what's interesting is that the victim doesn't appear to have a computer and it's in its flat. Okay, files. Lucia Lopez. The victim is either Lucia or that, that other sounding name. I think it's the other sounding name. Lijia Chang. Climate contract. Both probably wear glasses. Cigarette butt. I mean, I already have enough to plan to kill on this place. And the problem is, we don't have a computer in this place, so I can't get more data about it. Alone. All right, let's see. Living room. Okay, maybe there's something interesting in this place. Security guard, so the spouse is probably a security guard. Yeah. Great technician. Yep, that's the victim. Take the key, money she will probably need anymore. The wallet. Also has a pistol on the table. Long to her, so she probably wasn't using it. So I think we gathered enough from, from the crime scene. Now what I want to do is... I want to make a comparison. Because I said I'm going to ignore the crumpled paper anagram because it makes it too easy. But what do they have in common? Okay, let's see. 
Both are female. Average height, shoe size, glasses. The thing is that her spouse went to the pharmacy and she works in the pharmacy, but I think it's just coincidence. Our type, shopkeeper, all event enterprises, QA technician. I gotta check how far these buildings are from each other. You know, the pharmacy was, I think, over here. Yeah. Okay, pharmacy. Where's all of the enterprises? I think it's... Yeah, I probably won't find it if it's somewhere in a stack in a large building. The question is, what if it is in that building too? Huh. Okay, now here's an interesting coincidence. She lives in 1303 Udelux, 13th floor, third room. And she lives right next in the room, but she was killed in, in her pharmacy. Now, is that a coincidence, or does a killer like to kill women in the, in the same building on the same floor? Because she was killed in the pharmacy at the other end of the, at the, end of, <clears throat> at the, other end of the town. Hmm. So I'm going to check the building security cameras now, and I'm going to ask the neighbor what he thinks. Uh. What if the, the girlfriend is actually the killer from the first victim and she just randomly murdered people on the same floor? Because Shauna works, uh, lives in 1302 with her friend. Or maybe it's this person over here. Somebody's coming in. And there's someone in the building, there's a security room where I can check the cameras from the last, the last day. First, I'm going to ask what this, what this guy means. Oh, should put some clothes on. <laughs> What is your name? Come on, tell me your name. Levin Schumacher, okay. Anything usual? Uh-huh. Average build. Or 15 average build. Or 15 average build. Ah, one PC doesn't want to do watch. Okay, let's let's write it down. Ingo says four fifteen. That murder happened between three. 3.45 and 5, which means at 4.15, either somebody was probably that person who was killing around that time. So yeah, that narrows it down if, if the guy's not lying to me. Okay, now I just gotta find a camera room in this place. Ah, oh, there it is. Now the problem is getting in, and hopefully there's no security guard present right now. Yep, login is already in, that's good. Okay, so that's... 13th floor. Yep, good view of the door also. 435, that guy's probably just going up the staircase. Let's look at 415. Sometimes this button doesn't work this way. So it's a manual scroll. Ah. Hmm. It says the murder was three forty five and five o'clock. Let's go back to 345 and narrow it down. Hmm. 
Now this guy's going up the staircase, probably not to kill him. Also, let's go up the staircase. Before 15. Look at this one. Toggle on footage, which means it's toggling if the person is on that same day somewhere else spotted in the building. So, this person is only spotted once on this camera going up here. This person is spotted two times. What time is that? Uh huh. It's probably through the wall. It's going. The person is going downstairs. That's a bit buggy in the game. So yeah, this person is interesting because he spotted two times, about f right after the narrowed down time and about the beginning of the time. Four fifteen, and the person says there was a suspicion person of average build. Now, if I track both both of those down, and check if the average builder might narrow it down. Now, who was that person? It only appears once on this camera. No, wait, this one appears two times. Yeah, this one only appears once, which means in during that day, that person once went through the staircase and never came back down. Might live here. Or oh, this person appears here. And then appears we're here again, leaving right after the narrowed down time. So I think we are. Oh, good. Put this out. So in case it was it, that's like a thing to place to murder on the time. Okay. Now the interesting part is here. If I find this person and I get a print from them, or know where they live, or find a name or anything, then I got them. Now the question is, does this person show up in another hall? Ah, look at this. The problem is that this is a bit buggy. Sometimes they might be through the wall or something because I can't see them. Tenth floor landing. Let's go on further. We can check which time they actually entered the building. Or if they even leave the building. Ground floor lobby. Okay, they never went out of this way. Also not trackable in this building. So they might actually live in the same building. In the basement. Nothing the sixteenth floor, fifteenth floor. Yeah, thirteenth floor. We got them on the tenth floor. I think also the cameras might have a gaps in them because they're probably rotating or something. Four thirty-nine, tenth floor landing. Okay, if, if I tag this guy. Tag this person. Only shows up once on that floor and never goes out. Yuda looks 10th floor. What is behind that door? Maybe she lives on the 10th floor. Yeah, I gotta check this out. But first I'm gonna go for the other floors. Tenth floor landing, wait a minute. 439. Next to this next to this uh, um things box. 10th floor, okay, let's, let's go further. I'm gonna check 10th floor after that. On the 9th floor. We get lucky this person actually might live on the 10th floor. There's not many skyscrapers in this building. Like, it's a medium sized map. I think you have like a 3x3 three three grid of buildings. And there's about 300 something people total in this, in this map.
Yeah, we probably got this guy living in the 10th floor. That's gonna be amazing if I catch him with the camera. <laughs> Enough happens, so I got 29 happens here. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, let's go down to the 10th floor. Wait, the 7th floor right now. Ooh, I'm excited. <laughs> yeah. Why are we not? Ah, oh, it's, it's just a restaurant. <laughs> 